Now that we know how to use program mode for selecting sounds, and now that we know how to edit a program and add and delete layers and save them, now I want to talk about the heart of the sound producing capability in the PC3. That is the program editor algorithm. So let's go to 999 default program, and here I have basic piano key map playing, and I'll hit edit. And let's look at the next set of more buttons after key map menus, layer menu, pitch and amplitude we'll talk about. But let's go right to the alg, because this shows us the signal path. Since I'm playing one layer, this is a one layer sound, each note uses exactly one note of the 128 notes of polyphony that I have. And each of those notes on, on the, the, in the custom chip that's inside the Kurzweil, each of those notes can have a completely different synthesizer architecture. The way we program it is with layers. So this layer goes through this algorithm. The very first thing that happens is pitch. There's a pitch control on the playback that's been specified by the key map that it was selected on the key map page. As we said before, um, that was the, the piano. Now what I want to find is, uh, I think it's an ooh, a take six uh, vocal group we recorded, and I believe it's, it's called ooh. Let me just do a, a quick search string for ooh. There it is. Uh, here's ah. Yeah, maybe I'll use the ah. Yeah, good. You can hear the raw samples as they appear. We have, um, you can hear the programs inside the preset ROM that are very realistic. And when you take them down, strip them down to their basic samples, uh, you just get the, the waveform. And so we're listening to that. Now, if I change, uh, if I show you the algorithm one more time, the first uh, thing that the, the, the sampler does after fetching the samples, it puts it into a pitch control block, and if I hit edit on that, I can actually change the pitch. You can actually move the pitch all the way down to zero, and in some cases, as you might discover later, you can use that as an LFO. You can use that sample as a low frequency oscillator, but for now... This is a coarse pitch control in semitone. And this affects, now this is not transposition like we were doing on the marimba. This is actual pitch control once it already selects the sample based on the key I play. This is actually an adjustment on the playback rate of this sample. So the lower I go, the more distorted it's going to sound. The higher I go, the more chipmunky it's going to sound. That's the pitch control in semitones, exactly. Now if I move the cursor to the right, now I have a selection of other static adjustments to this one pitch control. A fine tuning in sense. So I can go in one hundredth of a semitone in increments exactly. I also have as a pitch control a fine in hertz. This is very interesting. We use this when we're layering two sounds together. In fact, why don't I quickly duplicate this layer? And we can hear two at once, but layer one, as I'm using the layer button, is not going to have any detuning, and layer two is going to have a, let's say, a one and a half hertz detuning. And you can hear the beat frequencies uh, in exact hertz, basically 1.5 times a second you're going to hear this beat frequency. So this is a very precise way to control what we call a digital chorusing. This is something that Kurzweil pioneered over um, probably 20 years ago. Um, and the, the, pitch, the, the pitch adjustment on this, not, not to get into too many brass tacks quickly, but it's just very interesting, uh, the kind of implementation that uh, Kurzweil goes to. The pitch adjustment is, uh, is different from each key number because it wants to keep, keep the beat frequencies constant across the keyboard. I can slow it down to maybe one-tenth of a second, and I get nice flanging here. My beat frequencies are so slow like that. That's nice. Now, let's go back and I'll delete that layer that I just made. Delete layer two. And we're back to one layer and no pitch adjustment. So we've seen that we have coarse pitch adjust and two ways of doing fine pitch adjust. Now let's go to the key track. This means how much pitch adjust is applied based on key number. Now remember, there's already transposition on the key map applied because I'm playing in semitones. 
The key map page told me that by 100 cents per key, key tracking on the key map page. Here, I could actually have it, maybe I have it go down for every key by a, by a drastic amount. And now, uh, I have a drastic uh, key, key tracking on pitch. I don't want any of that. How about a, uh, a, a, an octave, or maybe, yeah, how about an octave adjustment on velocity? For the vocals, it doesn't make much sense, but sometimes you'll find yourself using that. Uh, so that's the fine, uh, those are the pitch uh, control amounts that we can do. Let's go back to the algorithm page, and we see we've done the first thing that we can do. Uh, the very last thing in the signal path is amplitude, and that's how loud the, the, the layer is going to be. Uh, so let's edit that, and we see that I have a level control at the bottom of this column, and it's uh, minus 6 dB. That gives me a little bit of headroom. And if I look over here, I also have not a fine-tuning amount because decibels is fine enough uh, 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 for most purposes here. So we do have a key tracking amount, and I could make the sound, let's say, a negative key tracking amount, and the sound will get softer as I go up um, till it finally has nothing. So this is how we do a balancing across keyboard of the layer volume. And velocity tracking is used all the time here. We don't use it on pitch much, but we will use it here because this gives us our dynamics that we need for a sound. 35 decibels, we found, is about right for uh, recreating the sound of a recorded grand piano. So that's a good default here. That's 35 decibels difference between the softest velocity and the loudest velocity. If I had no tracking, I'm getting a little loud here, so I might want to move my adjust down just a little bit. Maybe like that. And now I have an organ type of uh, sound response that doesn't have any velocity tracking. Okay, so we've talked about the pitch and amplitude. What happens in between? This is the variable architecture synthesis that we're so proud of. Uh, this signal path represents four completely unique uh, DSP functions that are applied to the note. If the block is big, it has two inputs, and it uses um, a half the resources of this, of this uh, variable block. If the block is small, it has one input, and it's smaller. For example, on the two block, we can have a two-pole filter, which is 12 dB per octave. Here's a low-pass filter. And if I hit edit on that, I can control, oh, I can control the frequency of this low-pass filter. Here's my course adjust. And I have next to it, because it's a two-block piece, I can actually control the resonance as well. And let's add a resonant low-pass filter. I turn the resonance up and adjust the frequency. And here I've applied a, a powerful subtractive synthesizer to my Grammy-winning Take six, 6 vocal sample. Notice, please, that the, that the frequency that's specified for my cutoff is listed in note names as well as exact hertz, which gives us a, a precise uh, level of control. So if I really want the second partial of this to be... Uh, to be uh, accentuated, then I'll select, I'll play a C4, and I'll select my, my uh, resonant peak to be at C5. Now, if I want that sound, that resonant peak, to track the keyboard, well, over here, I can see that I have a key tracking amount for this low-pass frequency. So let's scroll to the right, and here I have a key tracking. If I set that at 100 cents per key, then I have full key tracking on the filter, and as the fundamental note changes, so will the frequency cutoff of the filter. This is one of the most important parameters on any analog synthesizer. It's called key follow. And because of the generalized nature of this uh, variable architecture synthesis, because everything has a key tracking amount and a, and, a, and a velocity tracking amount, it just appears naturally here in, in the case of using this low-pass filter. Well, this low-pass filter is one of over 60 functions that I can choose from. And as you can see, I've used not, uh, not even half of the synthesis capability of, of this one note of the 128-note synthesizer. I'll give you one other example of what we can do here. With uh, Let me scroll some algorithms. And you can see that we have a choice of algorithms 
uh, that all each offer different wiring and different size processing blocks. I found algorithm 8 here, which gives me a three block processing block, so I can actually have a parametric equalizer on this take six vocal. A parametric equalizer, as we know, has three parameters. It has a frequency and a width and a boost and cut amount. And so when I edit this parametric frequency, uh, equalizer, I have that control, that kind of very precise sound sculpting control on every note with key tracking, velocity tracking, and as we'll see later, any types of real-time controls I want to attach to it. In order to hear a parametric equalizer, you have to add some boost to the EQ, and then all of a sudden, we're accentuating certain frequencies, and I can hear which ones by moving the cutoff. Let's make the width of this a little narrower so I can hone in a little more exactly. And notice that this is even in specific units. I have exactly one octave width of this boost of 12 dB at exactly A5. And that's very nice. Now, I can set this, and that's really just great, and I can add key tracking. Maybe I want to add 100 cents per key tracking there. But what if I want this to move on some kind of real-time control to animate the sound? Let's do that next. First, let me exit this, and it offers me to save my default program. I'm going to say rename again, and let's say parametric, P-A-R-A-M-E-T-R-I-C. After many years, you can type your names that fast on the PC3. I'll say OK. It offers me first free. I say save, and the save is successful. In just a minute, we'll assign real-time controls to this.